Hello everybody and welcome back to this new video about the build of the Hurricane, the Guillo's Hurricane, the small model, is the only model there is, and the conversion to RC. And uh, I'm going to start it, but before I'm going to show you a new toy that I got, which is a small ruler. I do have the longer metal ruler, but sometimes I feel that I need a shorter one, so I got myself a short one, which is a 15 centimeter or 6 inch. 6 inch uh, metal ruler so that's I'm happy about that new toy what I've done I'll get the box maybe out of the way so it doesn't block the way not the view I've put of course the plan on my cork board I like the small cork board and the small plans because then I can move it aside I put it somewhere else and then I can do other projects or do anything else on the table so I like that and on top of it I put some some plastic a bit of plastic cover that, uh, that then protects the plan so that I can use the plan if I ever need it again. And uh, I've also taken out from the box the wood that I'm going to need. I'm going to start with the wing. I find myself always wanting to start with the wing. I think each of us has a bit of a different preference, right? So I start with the wing and uh, I'm going to start to lay out the pieces. I'm going to be using white glue. I have this white glue for wood. I know that uh, some like to use the super glue I don't like it too much I get my fingers stuck and I don't like it and then I find also that the, it's it's brittle it is faster but it's uh, I think the joint is brittle so I think the the white glue is a bit more flexible and, and therefore holds out better so as, as I say I start laying out the pieces I have to put also some of the of the stringers using the shape the guidance of the shape of the of the ribs I hope you can see it here so the ribs they have this little notch so I'll, I'll be preparing those, I'll be cutting them out with a, with a knife, but being laser cut, I think it's going to be really very easy to take out. That's one of the nice things of using the kits and laser cut kits, is that it's very easy to cut out the pieces. So I'll, I'll start with that, I'll, I'll lay out the pieces and then put a bit of glue and take it from there. Incredible how time flies when one is having fun. So all that build took me 45 minutes. I had the feeling it was 15 minutes, but it was 45 minutes, but I, I did enjoy it. I'm, I haven't finished the wing, of course, still. Some considerations. Um, I'm not gluing, per the instructions, the wing, the outer wing section to the center section, because then the dihedral is going to come here. I hope you can see this because you're looking at it upside down. Um, so, so that's not glued. I was careful not to put too much glue here so that I can do it. Um, and then I still have to put on the, the upper spars or the stringers that go at the, at the top. But I'm going to let it set for, for the moment. There's still also two more formers to go in, two ribs actually to go in, which is F2 on the right and on the left. And uh, that's here. This is an F2. I hope you can see it. I seem to recall on the Spitfire, it did have some like dotted holes, like it had holes indicating where it has to be bent. Here I don't see it, but I do see on the plan that it still has to be bent. The, the rib will come like this and then bends inwards to follow the shape, the shape of the fuselage. Um, so from that perspective I would say the Spitfire was maybe better thought or maybe it was a, a, a later, later production. This I'm going to, I'm not going to do it yet, I'm going to figure out where that break, let's say that uh, that bend in the, in the rib has to go before I do it. 
and uh, at the same time I'm already thinking where I'm going to put on the ailerons the ailerons are going to start going to be on the outer side only because it's if it's bent it's difficult to bend right the, the, um, the aileron or to, to move it up and down so it's probably going to be the whole length or maybe not I don't know if the whole length but as big a possible of a surface so it has an effect so from all the outer outer area of the outer wing panel and uh, what else yes also I did put in F1 which is the, the middle rib I was thinking maybe to leave it out um, I put it in but uh, I think I'm leaving it out because that's where the server is going to go like the, the build is going to have a, a central server in here and that server is going to move both ailerons so I'm going to have to cut into the um, the rib in the middle and maybe even into the the spars so I'm building it as per the plan and then I have to do some some cutting work so in any case I'm going to leave it there for for the night um, enjoyable and um, I'll come back at some point with more gluing and cutting and uh, shaping of the wing so now that the glue has set the next step what I've done already off, off camera I've prepared the, the rest of the stringers to go onto the wing. So there are two that go in the center section on the upper side and then there are two on each side of the wings. Uh, I've also prepared the, what they call the F2 ribs and I don't know if you can see it but I've, uh, I've scored it here and, and cut it like halfway through so that I can bend it slightly without actually breaking it through and those will go in there. Those will be the first pieces I put in. And, uh, and what else? Yes, and one thing that I have had to do in some cases, I've had to go in and uh, enlarge a little bit this this hole for the um, for the stringers because for some reason, when like these pieces of wood, they're not always the same thickness. I don't know if you can see it. Some of them are clearly visible, others aren't. So they're not always the same the same thickness. So a very good tool to have is of course the needle nose filing tool to make sure that all the pieces will, will fit in together. We don't want them to be loose but we want them to fit not that we need to squeeze in too much while we're building because then that could cause uh, a breakage. So that's then the next step and another thing that I've done also and again I don't know if you can see it on these stringers that go on down to the end to the wing tip I've already kind of cut it down like sharpened it down so that I don't need to do so much cutting off or sanding down thing at the end so that's already kind of prepared and uh, I'll be holding them also with these normal pins and uh, so let's see how it goes a bit more of gluing while I listen to some interesting video of aviation I think the ILS I want to learn how ILS works so I'm going to listen to an ILS video And now all the pieces are, are glued in and pinned down so that they dry in the right position and now it's a matter of waiting right so leave it there overnight and continue tomorrow just a, a note also the outer wing the sections are actually still not glued together they're not glued to the to the center wing because I still need to put in the dihedral in there but before I do that the next step is going to be to decide where the ailerons are going to go how long they're going to be so I might get out a book or something to see where the, the original ones were and then decide about how to build those ailerons how big and how far out to build the ailerons so that's going to be then the next challenge I've been up to stuff I'm afraid I haven't recorded everything because I was doing things in between but I've managed to build one of the ailerons I hope you can see it basically I, I cut out first of all what I did I, I cut out four pieces like this I measured it for length and it was five millimeter width at one end four at the other so very very small difference and uh, then I drew on the on the ribs where I wanted to cut and I cut first I did this wing of course and uh, basically I put it in together I, I stuck on some wood here which is a 1.5 millimeter that I have lying around and uh, and then I 
did also the aileron and they also had built in the the end of the ribs it's actually fitting very nicely with other models it wasn't so nicely because the the trailing edge is so thick that it actually takes up pretty much all of the of the trailing of the aileron which is uh, which is nice so i hope it's going to look okay like uh, that's kind of my aim and i'm still thinking how i'm going to hinge it the the aileron does have a little bit of of give I, I wanted to have a little bit of give so that it can move of course and uh, i'm still not going to put in the hinging because i'm still thinking how to do that as i say and i have the left aileron i used it earlier today so i think it's already set i hope a bit stuck to the plastic and this is the same but i still haven't put in those those little pieces these are really i didn't even cut it out i just got some scrap put it in there and then cut it to shape because it's so small i don't know if you can see it if it'll focus um it's so small that it's you can't really there's no point in tracing out the shape and trying to cut it out so this is then the the other aileron i'm going to sand it down probably so that it fits in loosely i don't want it to be too snug but uh, but loosely and then the next step what i'm going to do i want to take this and uh, sand it down at an angle so that there's some space for movement right so at the top and also on the wing itself i want to cut it somehow like this at this angle so there's a little bit of space to move down up is not going to be a problem because i've decided that if i do whatever hinge i do i'm going to do it on the upper part of the aileron so up it could probably even like flip over completely if it wants to um but at the bottom it's going to need some space to be able to fold down to have some effect so that is then the the aileron build and uh, this one still to be finished i'll do that uh, now i'll do it off camera because it's it's so small you can't really see the details and then the next step is going to be to create a dihedral and with that pretty much the wing will be ready for sanding and then for for next step so so a bit of an update on on how i'm doing things i believe i've shown you the ailerons already and i've already trimmed this one down so that if you put them beside each other maybe the other end is better actually you see that one has already been trimmed down what I do for that, and actually I just took a pen and I drew a, a blue line, it could be a black line, doesn't matter, like a line on top, so that I don't trim beyond that line. That's uh, the only important thing that I, that I want to take into account. And then I trim it down just that little bit and it already gives a little bit of a bend. I'll do the same thing on the wing also, once I have it off the board, and uh, that will hopefully give it enough space to to fold up and down so i've done one aileron that's the right aileron and then i'll be doing the the left aileron uh, but in between what i've done also i've put up the the jig for the dihedral the dihedral it says here it's uh, three quarters of an of an inch i believe i hope so i take the ruler three quarters of an inch i took some of the old jigs i have a box of rests and propellers and stuff kind of rubbish that i don't want to throw away and uh, I found these two jigs that kind of match that uh, three quarters of an inch height. So I put it there, I take the wing off, I drop in some glue in the spot that it has to be in, and then I, I leave it there and that will overnight, hopefully, set and then that will be the wing done. And then I just have to then do the same as I did on the aileron. I need to, I need to then uh, shave down or, or sand down the the wings bar there so that's actually the the whole thing i'm going to leave it there i'm going to finish the video now so that i can start to edit it also and uh, and the next part will be just taking the wing off and then i'll probably my i notice myself i'll go probably to the tail part so it will be the the elevator and the rudder and uh, again need some adaptation because this is done as a, as a rubber powered model so i need to put in some kind of other pieces there that uh, that will be able to hinge and uh, have movable parts so that's the progress so far on the hurricane rc conversion thank you everybody for watching looking forward to your comments and recommendations and i'll see you next time